Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called For Humans, Everything is a Weapon, Even the Floor, written by Slow AD 2584 Look, Trigapifity, it's impossible to enforce the No Weapons Allowed protocol with the humans. I know that it may seem impossible, Bumbi Bumba Floop, but this is about safety and well-being of other residents of the Habitation Center. I am fairly certain what with a bit of careful formatting the regulations we could... Ah! Oh, so that's it. You just don't understand, nor have you seen it. Those humans, the xenoanthropologist experts say, are a class 11 tool user with an always active subconscious plan and contingency ID. With flight or fight instincts honed on Earth, their class 11 hell world. I know that's a rather lot of class 11s, but it gets to the point across pretty clearly. For them, literally everything is a weapon. Oh, come on. Not everything. What about a spoon? Oh, by the dark star, do not remind me. Oh, I can never look at those eating implements the same ever again. <sighs> I get uncomfortable just holding one while I eat. Now acutely aware of its uh, concave rigidity. An ability to under-leverage oh, things with surprisingly large amounts of force. That sounds, um, horrifying. So okay then, no more metal eating utensils with fragile wood extract. It should be... Oh, ick. What are you trying to do to me? The splintered shank wounds of the shattered and ratted splinter stick through the throaxial vesicle of that poor, poor buffoon that picked that fight. I still don't think they got all the slivers out. No, my word. Fine then, utensils. No tables or chairs. They can just eat with their hands on pillows and cushions that we prove... Uh, what? Seriously? Why are you wincing like that? Uh, it's a joke that still makes me twitch. They say, wet polyester is very strong, never break. But piss rag snaps necks. No, for the love of the teal star. Now you're just making things up. I really wish I was, Trigobifity. But you get my point. No weapons allowed is simply not enforceable with them. Then we just take everything away. They can live in an empty, smooth hab space where they cannot possibly have any weapon. They would still have the floor. The floor? Okay, now how could they possibly use the floor as a weapon? Oh, we actually have a recording on that incident from the other day. Uh, hold on. The video from the Baron Cargo Bay transferred you where a human was backed into a flush corner by a large, brutish poverty warrior, who apparently took offense with the giggling, drunk human for some reason. The proud warrior species gestured and revoked the human, seeming to feel confident in its dense carapace armor, covering every part, every joint of its fearsome genetic design. He also thought that he caught the human in a place where he would have no weapons available. He was wrong. As the booberty warrior rushed in and grappled the human, they struggled for a bit, gripped arms in arms, and after the booberty smashed his third limb down and broke the human's nose, the human got a serious sober look for a moment, and they both stumbled over and fell to the ground, hard. The human got up and wiped the blood from his nose and walked away. The booberty warrior was dead. Investigation judged at self-defense and an accidental fatality, but privately, secretly, everyone knew. They didn't just fall. The human tripped the warrior, then leveraged his body mass over the center of the fall rotation, and the first part of the booberty warrior to strike the ground with the back of his head. While the human, during the fall, managed to get his forearm braced on the warrior's forehead, adding all of his mass to that moment of initial impact as well. It was a sickening combination of mass, rotational conservation, timing, leverage, and violent intent. No! Oh my! Look! I've been telling you, everything, literally everything is a weapon for them. I cannot pretend to understand how hellish their primitive evolution must have been to have owned their tool use to this degree. But, and how, how are we to control the humans if this is the case and everyone is in constant risk? Well, well, it seems obvious, doesn't it? Just chill with them. Appeal to their higher minds, their sense of humor, if we can manage it. They do, after all, come in peace. Well, that doesn't seem very reassuring at all if, um... Oh, 
I don't think you get the deeper meaning to peaceful. Let me see if I can remember it. Now, uh, I'm just paraphrasing here, but uh, there is a difference between a peaceful man and a harmless man. A harmless man could not hurt you even if he tried. A peaceful man can absolutely ruin you, but chooses not to. I, uh, I, I still don't see how that makes anything. It points out how they don't really want to be jerks. That they could always have a weapon at hand has always been a certainty, but they don't want to go looking for a fight. When you calm down a bit from the shock and horror of them, it is actually a gizzard warming fact that their um, heart thingies are in the right place. I think that's how they say it. Well, I certainly am never going to get within a thousand centi spans of one of those monsters. Oh, haven't you heard? High Command has decided humans make fantastic station security forces. We're going to be the bosses of dozens of them very soon. No! Uh, you just simply must be pulling my tentacle. I think I'm going to be ill. Oh, come on. They are all right. They grow on you a bit once you get to know them. They are actually kind of fun and clever and always down for a laughing good time. I'm still trying to master their uh, dark humor. Uh, but I think uh, one of their sayings kind of applies here. If you can't beat them, then beat them. You're really not helping to make this any better. I know, but it's kind of funny though, right? Uh, I mean, I can almost get the humor. End of story. Story number two. Don't lie to humans. Written by Catfish21SM. We stand here before Galactic Council today to hear the case between the gratuity and the humans. Senator Vixkorvec, you may address the council. Thank you, dear fellow council members. It is of utmost disgust that I stand here before you today to report that our home star of the Humbertal was destroyed by a human superweapon. Human, Senator, is the report true? It is, however, she exaggerates. How so? It was a warning shot. Everyone here knows that they have a binary star system. We only destroyed the small one, and the impact had no effect on their home world. Our home world is rocked daily by massive earthquakes caused by the gravitational ripple of one of our system stars systematically exploding. You started it by threatening to blow up our home world. We don't have a weapon capable of doing that. Well, you said you did. Silence! You will maintain order in front of the Galactic Council. Sorry. Sorry. Good! Human Senator, while it is not technically a violation of the Galactic Council regulations to build such a weapon, why would you ever feel the need to do such a thing? As you know, humans feel a constant need to defend ourselves. Evolving on a Category 9 death world, we were under constant threat from outside forces for most of our evolutionary past. Most of you know that the Gratuity have been bragging for years now about their development of a light-speed capable planet buster weapon. Thus, being humans, we were forced to respond to such threats by building our own bigger guns. Senator Vixkorvac, how do you respond? We thought that everyone knew that these were empty threats. We thought that everyone knew that it was impossible to build a planet buster class weapon. Human Senator, how do you respond? Apparently, it wasn't impossible. Gratuity, Senator. Your response? Do you have any response, Senator? Apparently, it wasn't impossible. It appears that we have reached the end of our debate. Let's put this to a vote, then. Should the humans have to face consequences of their actions? Various members of the Council looked down at their pads in what could only be described as their species' version of nervousness, fear, or panic as they placed their votes. The Council's decision is unanimous. The humans will face no punishment. However, it is requested that you immediately begin dismantling your weapon now. Okay, we can do that. That was easy. You humans are being strangely cooperative today. Yeah, well, we were planning on decommissioning the old piece of junk soon anyway. So, it's really no big deal. The entire room fell into a deep, almost trance-like silence as the human ambassador walked out of the room... Within the following three hours, a new record was formed for how quickly the Galactic Council could decide on and pass a new Galactic Law. Galactic Law 000002. Don't lie to humans. End of story. End 
There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.